We'll move on to correspondence and communication with our superintendent of schools, Mr. Michael Brooks. Thank you, Ms. Horton. I don't believe we have any correspondence or communications to share publicly tonight, correct, Ms. Lariah? Moving on to item number three on the agenda is public comment. If there's any public comment on the agenda items. Okay. Moving back to Mr. Brooks for our superintendent report. Bless you. Uh, I just have a couple of quick things. First of all, welcome tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I can't wait to recognize the students in a, a few short minutes. Um, uh, Ms. Hecht actually is going to give us a quick little briefing on the backpack program and acknowledge a really nice contribution that we did receive for the backpack program. So if I could pass that off to you for a brief moment, Ms. Hecht. <laughs> Good evening. So I'm just going to give you a little update on last year's service levels. The total number of bags distributed last year were 990, which is equivalent to 5,940 meals, which is also equivalent to 9,995 pounds of food, of which 362 were fresh. The cost of the backpack program last year was $6,143, of which we have 728 left in our grant, and we raised enough money last year to cover this year's amount. And just recently, MFA gave and donated to the backpack program $1,000. So that's going towards next year. So that's great. And for those of you who don't know, MFA is Marble Faculty Association. It's our, it's our teachers and the associates with the teachers. So thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you for the donation, certainly. Thank you for the report. I'd also like to offer, and certainly don't need an answer tonight, but I would like to offer to any board members, if there's interest in any building tours, I know some of us, I, I gave a tour to some uh, board members last year. Um, it really can be very flexible. I can work around your schedule, whatever works for you. If you'd like to come into the schools while they're uh, in operation, I'd love to take you around to the schools. So certainly um, we can coordinate with multiples at the same time or individuals, however it works for you. So put that out there if anyone's interested. Just myself and um, Ms. Horton know and I'll make that happen okay thank you and the last one this week is actually a very important week in the world of Board of Educations because the governor has um, as uh, recognized that this week actually it's next week but we don't have a meeting next week so we're gonna do it this week is Board of Education recognition week so I actually would like to read a quick proclamation that is signed by the governor. It says, whereas each year school board recognition week is observed by the more than 700 school boards and school districts throughout New York Empire State, whereas one state's public education system is designed, our, excuse me, our state's public education system is designed to meet the educational needs of all children and to empower them to become competent, productive, contributors to society and, ever, and the ever-changing world. And whereas members of local school board boards are dedicated to children, learning, and community, and devote many hours of service to elementary and secondary public education as they continually strive for improvement, excellence, and progress in education, recognizing that all children can be successful learners, especially when educating is education is tailored to the individual needs of the child. And whereas local school board members are strong advocates for public education, and they're responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and to the public's expectation to the district by working closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members to create the educational vision we all hold for today's students and for those in the future. Whereas the members of the New York State, the New York State locals, the New York State's local school boards respond to the educational needs of the communities they serve and help ensure the solid foundation of our school system. In doing so, these leaders help strengthen our state's educational system and improve future prospects for our children. And whereas during the week of October 23rd through 27th, special activities and programs will be held in communities across New York State in observance of School Board Recognition Week. 
and it is fitting to join in acknowledging the commitment and contribution of members of local school boards. Now, therefore, I, Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby proclaim October 23rd to 27th as School Board Recognition Week. So I would actually ask everyone here to help me thank these volunteers on the dais up here for the work they do on behalf of our children and our community. So thank you, Board of Education. Thank you. And as a small token of appreciation, we have a couple of items. So thank you very much for the work you do on behalf of our children. It's a thankless job. It is a volunteer job. Many, many hours are devoted to thank making you. sure that our programs are in line with the values of this community. And thank you. So. Thank you very Thank much. You. And with that, I have nothing else to report. Okay. Then we will move on to our student representative report with Isabella Martinez. Um, well, starting with the elementary school, there was a PTA meeting held on October 2nd. The next one will be on November 6th. Picture Day was held October 4th, and tonight, October 19th, was the ENL Family Fun Night. There's also groups of Spanish Honor Society students who have been reading books to the ESL children. Um, Fire Prevention Week what just occurred. Milton and Marlboro Firemen came to the MES with fire trucks, a smokehouse, and a, the Freckly, the fire dog. Um, the second graders with their fifth grade buddies walked down to the Marlboro Free Library escorted by the Marlboro Police Department to learn about library services and to get library cards. Third graders just designed and engineered slides as a culminating activity on forces and interactions. Fourth grade students learned about 3D printing and how it can be used to solve world problems. They also saw it in action. And fifth graders studied the early migration of humans using Ozobots in social studies and will be writing about what they learned. Um, middle, school, middle school had Red Ribbon Week that will be held October 23rd to the 27th. Picture Day will be October 25th. Um, the Halloween dance is scheduled for October 27th, and there has been also a large growth of clubs in the middle school as well as students joining these clubs. Moving on to the high school, October 5th, Ms. Schlager co coordinated two Skype events. Tyler Gerritsen presented information to biology and college biology students discussing microbiology. Um, October 5th, this was the senior, senior and junior powder puff game. There was also financial aid night that night. Um, Sue Mead from Dutchess Community College explained the financial aid process to parents and students. Spirit Week was held October 2nd to October 6th and it ended with a pep rally to motivate and support our te sports teams for their homecoming games. October, on October 6th, the Iron Dukes beat Red Hook during their homecoming game. Many students took the PSAT for college preparation on October 14th and the high school hosted the second annual seniors versus staff volleyball game last night on October 18th. And the student council, school counselors, I'm sorry, are hosting college night at the MHS tonight, October 19th. And that's all I have. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it is our pleasure to recognize our students of the month. Mr. Brooks, will you do the honors, please? Certainly, we are going to begin tonight with our students of the month with the middle school. Good evening, everyone. It is my great pleasure to recognize one of our wonderful students of the month. And here tonight, we have Ashley Consoli. Hey, Ashley. And here to tell us some of the wonderful reasons why she is our student of the month is her English teacher, Mr. Hayden Carlin. For our student of the month, the red team has selected Ashley Consoli. Ashley is a kind-hearted, respectful, and hardworking student. This is my second year in a row having Ashley, and watching her grow and improve has been a wonderful experience. She's a role model both in and out of the classroom. Not only does she demonstrate how a young adult should act, she puts in tremendous effort despite the fact that she's naturally a gifted student. She's a talented artist who's used her abilities to assist Marlboro High School's Interact Club to promote fundraisers, and she's always willing to help out. She was chosen as one of only a few middle school representatives to be a part of that club in the high school, 
and she represents Marlboro Middle School in the way that we hope all our students do. She's compassionate and accepting, and whenever we do partner work in class, you can always count on her to work enthusiastically, regardless of who she ends up with. She never complains, she never makes excuses, and she never behaves in anything but a positive manner. We look forward to another great year with Ashley because we know she's capable of doing amazing things. Congratulations. Next, we'll move to the elementary school. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Marlboro Elementary School, it's our pleasure to introduce our student of the month, Gigi Wanamaker, and her nominating teacher, Mrs. Christine Williams, who's going to speak about our Gigi. Hello. Uh, Gigi is a wonderful person and student. She always, obviously, has a smile on her face and a positive attitude. I honestly don't think I've ever seen her in a bad mood. Um, she's a very talented artist, of course, and strives to do her best on all of her projects, working until everything is perfect. She's also very talented outside of school and is very active in dance and drama. And I look forward to seeing her every time she comes in my door. And I know I'm not the only teacher that feels that way. I asked her classroom teacher, Mrs. Boyd, to share a few words, and she had this to say. Gigi is a hardworking, conscientious student. She is kind, caring, and considerate of others. Gigi loves to learn and has a positive attitude towards school. She comes to school each day with bright eyes and a beautiful smile. Overall, Gigi's a gem, and she really deserves this award. Congratulations, Gigi. Thank you, Mrs. Walsh and Mrs. Williams. And the last but not least, certainly, Marlboro High School. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to introduce Dominic Guerrero, a senior and member of the class of 2018. 
Mr. Barbulin is going to be introducing him. I'll just say briefly that in, in going through a conversation with Dominic and taking a look at his records, the last two years have been college everything for Dominic. Um, he has an interest in engineering. He's in the top 10 of our class. He's got a real bright future ahead of him. Uh, just a great citizen. We're very proud of him. And I'm going to let Mr. Barbulin go ahead and give an introduction. Congratulations. Dominic Guerrero was selected as the October Student of the Month by the Social Studies Department for many reasons. Um, Dominic has excelled in his academics here in Marlboro with a full class schedule that includes college English, college psychology, college Spanish, college government, college sociology, college macroeconomics, and I probably missed a few. Also, advanced placement calculus. Um, his teachers would all agree that Dominic is intelligent and is always very meticulous in his work. Uh, this is my second year having Dominic as a student, and he's an individual with fantastic character, always bringing a positive attitude to the class. Dominic is a strong leader in the classroom, and is always seeking deeper meaning in the topics that we've discussed. He has a work ethic that is unparalleled and has shown a strong commitment to succeed both in and out of the classroom. I wish Dominic success in the future as he applies to colleges and becomes another great Marlboro graduate. You know, those of you that are regular attendees get bored of what I'm going to do right now. Actually, before you leave, Gigi, I want to, I want to talk about you a little bit, so don't leave yet. <laughs> I, uh, I like to brag after students in a month because it's so wonderful to hear some of the words that are used to describe your children. So, again, the regular attendees may look at this and say, okay, we've heard that before. But that actually speaks to the quality of the people that we have. I mean, when our people, our kids, are talked about as being respectful and hardworking and talented artists, compassionate, accepting, they're active in dance, they're always smiling, they're hardworking, they're a great citizen, they're meticulous, fantastic character, they seek deeper meaning. I mean, did you hear those college classes? I mean, impressive. Well, that's impressive. What's the most impressive to me is overall gem. She's an overall gem. I mean, these are great things to say about our kids. So it's because of families and kids like you that Marlboro's a great place. So thank you. Welcome to our meeting tonight, and thank you for bringing your kids. And I'm glad we were able to spend some time recognizing the great things that you do for your kids and your kids do for us. So thank you. So now you can go, Gigi. It's OK. <laughs> Moving on with reports, at this time I would like to ask Mr. Patrick Witherow and Mr. Fred Callow to provide us with our food presentation report. Oh, okay. Here come the boys, center it up. All 
All right, all right. We usually take a little bit of a break, but we thought maybe people would be hungry and want to listen to about our food presentation. Everybody's got somewhere to be. We're here. <laughs> We're here. Thank you, Mr. Jennison. I'd like to thank Mr. Walters for coming too in the back room. So, are we ready to begin? Okay. Welcome, everybody. I just want to give you a quick update on what's going on in the world of food. All right, this year we have uh, seven people working at the high school, five at the middle school, and eight uh, working at the elementary school. These are all full-time, part-time employees that work for us, getting a range of four and a half to three hours a day. Uh, Mr. Jensen is a full-time employee that works at the high school. Our district cook is here this evening as well. Very important numbers here. I'm, I'm proud to be wearing my 20-year pin tonight that I've been, uh, I was given at the opening day. The 37 plus percent is quickly approaching 38% in this district. When I first started here, and I can say this, that that number was around 15 to 16% 20 years ago. I'm astonished that it's actually creeping up closer to 40%. Uh, I think it's a little crazy when I look at it sometimes, but that's where we are in this district. And there's a breakdown for each building, but overall, that's where we are. More kids are in need in this district than ever before of a free breakfast and definitely a free lunch every day. So that just really shows the importance of our, our department. Prices stay the same from last year, 285 at the higher levels, 265 at the lower levels. That seems to be about average what other districts around in the, uh, in the county, in Orange County, Ulster County uh, charge right now. This is our reimbursement for lunches. And looking at the numbers, which is astonishing here is $3.35, $3.34 is really not a lot of money when you're planning out food. Uh, eating healthy is not cheap and trying to serve a healthy meal every day uh, at that cost uh, is difficult at best most times. And you can stop me for any questions along the way if you want to. Food Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a couple of members tonight. Mr. Jennison is here. He's on our, our committee. I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Bruce Harms, who's here as well. Uh, Mr. Harms is actually retired from Vassar College. He ran the food service operation over there for many years, and he has volunteered to be on the committee. I took him around to all three schools during lunchtime, not just showing them what the food out front was, but we have what we have in the back of the house for our three schools as well. So thank you for coming and supporting me tonight. I appreciate uh, your efforts on the committee. Do you want to say anything, Bruce? <laughs> okay, put you on the spot. Uh, so we're, tr we're trying to get some input from the community. Uh, we've had two meetings so, so far. We have another one coming up uh, after the uh, new year. So we're trying to get some input from the community moving forward on what they think and view as the department uh, grows. Financial summary. Now, that's a lot of numbers, but I'd like to point out actually two numbers that mean the most in this report, and Patrick put this together from yesterday. I, at first I was like, wow, that's a lot, of, a lot of input there. Two things are important in food service. Uh, cafeteria sales, are you increasing, are your sales increasing from one year to another? And looking at these two top numbers here, is actually three top numbers. Yes, we are. We actually increased our revenue last year in meals served, miscellaneous, and cafeteria sales in all three items, which is very good. The second one is cost of food, your net cost of food. Now, let me find this one here. As you can see, your cost of food went down last year. So that is also a positive thing. That means you get closer to maybe making a profit or hopefully at least breaking even, which is, a, which is always the goal. Uh, but going back to the previous slides for $3.34, that sometimes is very difficult to do. So at least we're moving in the direct, right direction as far as our net of cost food and increasing sales. So that's a positive uh, thing there. Backpack, you sold my thunder earlier. I didn't know you were going to give a report, but I threw it in here anyhow. I work with the... Uh, uh, student reps in the morning, Honor Society kids, they come in on Thursday mornings and we fill bags at the high school. It just doesn't start there. It starts with backpacks, planning back in the year, our committee, 
our meetings that we have, the food drives that we have, the stuff the bus that coordinates all the paperwork, Catherine Fabrizio doing the beautiful bags with the tags on it, replacement bags over the <laughs> turn of the year. Uh, but they, just want to share that with you. What you actually get in there is you get a protein, a couple of proteins, you get breakfast items in there as well. Uh, you get snacks. We give out Stewart's milk cards in the, in the bag, so it's a positive thing. I think there's about 37 right now. The number's been fluctuating since the beginning of the year, uh, but I think we have about 37 students enrolled currently. Uh, they have to bring their bags back. We make sure they're cleaned out, and we send home more stuff. So uh, thanks to Robin and everyone else involved at the ground level getting the bags to the child on Friday afternoons to go home for the weekend. So uh, a lot of coordination there. Next course, we started a salad station at the high school this year that went over very well the first day of school. Uh, so we've been going with that. Marlboro Elementary School, we decided to actually bring it to them as well. They were doing about 16 salad plates a day on the three through, three through five side of the building. So we actually started just this week, right Cindy? This week we started uh, doing a salad station, supposed to the children have them themselves, which I'm not, I don't like too much. So. We actually make the salads for them and uh, handle all the food themselves and actually hand it to the student. We do that at the high school and the elementary school. And hopefully, uh, maybe we'll bring it to the middle school as well. So that's been great so far. And trying to always drive a little more revenue. After schools, uh, starting on November the 6th, we're gonna start uh, opening the cafeteria at the high school for a couple, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so after school, so kids can actually buy some stuff before they run off to their sports or after school activities. There's a need, it seems, for that, so we're hoping to do that. So November 6th, we actually picked that day because it's actually winter sports that start that day. So we don't want, to, so anybody staying for winter sports, basketball, swimming, anything after school activities, will actually have a chance to buy something because I know some of these kids that eat early lunch periods at 10.40 in the morning at the high school are starving at 2.30 in the afternoon and they're looking to buy stuff and access their accounts and, and get some snacks after school or another sandwich or a sandwich again on the bus or whatever they're doing after school. So, any questions? Yeah, Fred, I have a question. Thank you. I'm looking at the uh, profit and loss statement that, that was distributed with the agenda today. It's a little different than your financial summary. This one has September 16th and September 2017 and yours goes a little different. but. The question I have is that there's big swings in the net income. Both of them look positive on this report, but there's, the net income from September 16 to 17 went from 41.5,000 to 11.7,000, and then the Indian fund balance was large as well, 48,000 down to 14. What, what creates these big swings in profit loss, and what does it mean in terms of are we actually? I, I don't, I, don't, I haven't seen that report you're looking at, I don't think. It's not this one, correct? Yeah, well, okay, maybe the question's more to Pat, but even well, in this financial summary, it looks like we're... It a lot of times, um, it all depends on the timing and when who was purchased. Um, so when purchase orders are issued and when food comes in and is received and when, it, when it's realized on the financial statements. So that's why, you know, the, this comparison to the previous year doesn't really Which is that? What's yeah. significant to note on there is on the bottom of revenues, when you see transfers from the general fund, back in you know 14, 15, we were transferring 113 thousand dollars to support the cafeteria operations. 15, 16, that dropped to 100 thousand. 16, 17, that dropped to 45 thousand dollars. So a significant reduction in the amount of money transferred from the general fund to support the cafeteria operations, which in turn means that the cafeteria operations.
Are those transfers coming from the fund balance? Because the, the, the financial statement refers to the fund balance, which implies there's something specific well, for food. Fund balance, you know, this, is, this is a separate fund, this yes. is a lunch fund. Okay. So there's a fund balance, much like there's a fund balance in the general fund. But th these are transfers actually coming from the general fund to the school lunch fund. So in general, on average, are we running even, making a profit, or running well, under? right there. I mean, Has there been, ever been a study to figure out what what might take to bring it to even at least either well, yeah, cost we get into a price? Philosophical area when we start talking about that because really? you know you're selling a lunch for two dollars and eighty five cents, right? Three dollars and thirty cents for reimbursements. You know we don't. Fred doesn't pay rent. Um, you know facility charges, you know custodial charges. Yeah. You know you need to put it into the perspective of what you would pay for an average. But you're not going to. Right. Um, and and at the. So right now we're under, basically running under right now overall. Yeah, we yeah. supported forty five thousand dollars, but you know the year previous was a hundred thousand dollars. So we yeah, right. Were in the right direction. One last question: At this time last year, when you did the report, I remember Bill Bell asking if we if there was an analysis that could be done to compare the uh, paper products that we use versus maybe using flatware and and whatever extra labor that might entail. Did we ever do that? And was there a result of that? Or we've not had an opportunity. No. We, it's something we can kind of put on the agenda to look at. Yeah, um, just curious if that ever happened. You know, there, there comes, you know, with, you know, obviously there's like additional costs. We, we would have to. Right. Yeah. Right Labor, now. one time costs. Uh, yeah. How to clean them, how to replace items that are damaged by bread, and um, <laughs> what kind of costs are associated with that. Okay, thanks. No, thank you. So the beginning um, inventory on the PL. It shows um, a ten thousand dollar difference from one year to the next. Is that? Did you say that's just based upon um, when the food was bought? There's, it's timing, right? How much food is he sitting on now? How much food, you know, did, was he sitting on at the same time last year? Depending on what was ordered and the orders were received, you know, basically how much inventory you bring forward from one month, one year to the same month the next year. You can see a significant swing. And then the net cost of food, $15,000 difference from one year to the next. Same scenario? Yeah, well, it would be impacted again by, you know, the net cost of food would, how much did you purchase in that month? So what yep. month? No, we're talking about the overall one for that, not the monthly. This is the P&L for 16, 17, I think. <laughs> Hard, and I don't mean, I, honestly, I don't like the way this, this report's given to you with looking back at the previous year because it doesn't really mean anything. It's just ridiculous. So, why do we have it? Snapshots of time and comparing it to the snapshot of last year. Now, is there a requirement that it's done month, you know, month comparison to month comparison, or can it be September to October, October to November, like prior month year to comparison? date? Yeah. Or even a year to date? Year to date for the same period as the previous year. That, so th yeah, like the, that's something that we can take a look at. Okay. I, I, would, I would like to reconfigure this. The, the treasurer doesn't like to set up this way. I don't like to set up this way. It doesn't give you, there's not a lot of meaning there looking at the two little windows of time. You know? Would that be preferable to the board? What we could do is maybe for next month is, is we could look at reconfiguring and give you both reports to, to see what one looks like. I 
think it would be good to see. Is that it? Do you have another slide that you're going to? Or no, I'm all done. I just, just, <laughs> so, just in case. I didn't want to sit down. I, <laughs> I had a question about your advisory committee. So yes. you've met once, twice? Twice. Twice. So what have those conversations been like? Uh, the first one was an introduction back in, in August when we met uh, just to see what we're, where we wanted to go with things and what, what the goals of the committee would be, uh, trying to put a positive light and spin on school lunch was the, was the idea. Uh, did we take some complaints in? Sure, if people had complaints or had some ideas, but we looked at things that could be positively used moving forward more than talking about things that are out of our control. If you, know, you want Pepsi at lunchtime, well, we're not going to serve Pepsi at lunchtime. I'm sorry, we can't serve Pepsi at lunchtime. But trying to give them a little more understanding of the public of what our restraints are and what we can do uh, and what we have to do as far as getting certain items on trays and stuff like that every day. Yeah, the first meeting, we, we, it was more of a brainstorming all kinds of ideas, what, what possibly could we look at. The second meeting, we've more, we've taken a more narrow focus on what we want to try and work on this year. And there's really three pieces to it. Um, one is to open up this PM grab and go and see what that impact is financially. The other was to look at the So that was derived out of that committee? Excuse me? That this new aspect that you're talking about for s during sports, Correct. that was derived from this committee? Yes. The other aspect we're looking at is uh, continuing new menu introductions to try and bring some new items in that, um, that conform with the nutritional requirements but may be appealing to the students. And the third is to work on a, like a media kind of marketing campaign to both get feedback from the students in the schools How are the salads going? Are they? How are the salads going? We went from uh, 16 at the first day of the elementary school to how many today? 40? Over 40. And that was just the first week. Yeah, that's just at the, ele that's at the elementary school, the, at the high school. Are they already are prepared? Or, or they're they're in a container a already. The, the salad is romaine lettuce with the option of spinach in it as well. And then they get the, I call it the pick five. So they have to pick a protein, which is tuna fish, turkey, ham, hard boiled eggs, anything else I'm missing. And then you get to pick four other items, anything from red, 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 red roasted peppers to uh, walnuts, help me out, celery, cauliflower, broccoli, the whole gamut of tomatoes, baby tomatoes, sliced tomatoes. Every, there's like another 13 different things to choose from every day. And how much is that? How much of that Adult, is locally, for you? The low price grown. of four dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> no, that a wasn't a question. How much of it is locally grown? How much of it is it locally grown? Wow, that's a great question. I get all my produce from Safar Produce, so as much as they're bringing in locally, you know, the season's kind of ending here. Uh, Where are they from, Washington State? Apples from, and absolutely not in Marlboro, never, yeah. never on my watch, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing from Washington State ever here, never. <laughs> pa Patrick, last year I believe we had that conversation about maybe getting the local farms involved because they, a lot of them, especially in this area, do sell produce. Um, so we should be using 
our own when it comes to well, this time of the year. After after the season ends, I you know. There are regulations on how we can procure food. Is there a way to find out how we can support our own community? I mean, other school districts do do something like that. All the other school districts are under the same restrictions that we are under in terms of how they use or procure their food. That's why, like Safar Produce, um, we're probably going through a bit to get it. I mean, that's why we yeah. have we, we do get local apples, pears, uh, grapes this year, correct? We got grapes this year locally tomatoes locally this year so it's not like we're not getting anything okay i'm not Good. buying i'm not buying apples from safar produce i would say no we live in apple country no, no. we are apple country yeah but that's only because we're staying under that dollar threshold right. that you can do that. correct yeah. i can only yeah. spend so much with that certain farmer yeah. and then that's it that's good is this the first year you've had this advisory committee yes it's, it so far i think it's a great idea and a couple ideas you've done already well, we sound really it. good it's really been you know it's it's been good because Carrots for red. It's an orange vegetable. So I think it's a good Sounds like a data analysis project for the, like the math teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it? Great. I'm out of here. Any other questions? Thanks, Fred. Stop in for a salad anytime. Concluding our reports, Mrs. Reed, will you update us on the latest information that was presented at the NISBA convention in Lake Placid? NISBA convention is always fun because you always get to learn something new. I went to the law conference this year and some of the topics were, which I did bring law, the book back for everyone to see, um, freedom of speech and the rights for board members, employees, uh, what you do yourself, um, how you not represent the, the board, one of the other topics were the e-cigarettes and how they're banned um, throughout New York State, and there's a law that they've come up with. Human rights were talked about on uh, transgenders. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the e-cigarettes? Not allowed on campus. Um, it's a health law. It is 1399-0. Um, 
not in cars, not anywhere on, just the same way that you do with cigarettes. It, the same thing goes with the vaping on the e-cigarettes. It's just banned. So you can't have it on property, or you're not supposed to have it on property. Because uh, there, a, a, there was a big um, mis, um, confusion with school districts because they weren't sure if you could have them on, and they weren't. So during the law conference, they did touch base on that, and they did talk about that. They better find a new um, service that they're using for updating, because that was something, I want to say, last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. That well, it, it's that. that's what I'm saying. That, but that it's policy it's, wise, right, everybody it, should have updated that right. previously. Basically, that's what they were talking about is because yeah. some of the school districts were still like upstate New York, were still, you know, so it, it, it they touched on that. One of the that was one of the newer things. Um, uh, human rights is a big thing this year um, to how we discipline our students, um, also how we text and talk and talk with um, texting with our parents and with the students. That was one of the other issues that was discussed. What do you so, mean? Um, when you email a student and a parent, there are proper ways to go about it, making sure you're using your school computer to do it. Um, so that was all covered in there. Um, I'm trying to find the segment on that. Um, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, as far as uh, relationships. Um, so that was the law conference. The, um, my question about the e-cigarettes, it's, are they talking, did they expand their definition of e-cigarettes because there seems to be this new trend um, with, with kids that it's, you know, not just vaping the nicotine, but there's a new trend where I think it's called therapeutic air, where you're actually using what looks like an e-cigarette um, to inhale essential oils, which... They basically, that would still be covered underneath the e-cigarettes. Even though it does not contain nicotine. Even though it... That's it, good. Basically, e-cigarettes is basically vaping. And vaping is not was one of the things that they did talk about, that that basically covers the whole thing. So no smoking period of any kind or, or any of that. Indoor, outdoor, surrounding buildings, schools, vehicles, um, even when people are transporting, transporting children on the buses or whatever, none of that is, it's allowed. So, um, but this I will share with you, everybody and you can touch base on that. Um, other thing is I did get to go to class. And I'm excited because um, one of the classes, some of them were okay, but one that really stood out was two things. One was the commissioner of education. I enjoyed her talking. Um, the new testing will go from three days to two days, um, is what she said. Uh, hold on, let me go back to where I was. I jumped um, shorter testings. They're also going to have teachers in New York State, which everybody was very excited about, come up with the questions now. So it will be our teachers in the state actually in control of the test. Um, and basically, I thought the other thing which I'd call Rob is if you're holding a pre-testing class, then you're not teaching. You should be teaching. No, I'm not saying this right. Sorry. If you're holding a pre-testing class to take the test, you're not really covering what you're teaching. So you should never have that kind of a class. It should be something that you're teaching all the time. So the kids automatically know they're not just trying to memorize a particular area. Um, they're, you know, just prep time. But the one that really was the big one for me there was um, our neighbor to our south. NFA uh, came up with the program, it's also, they learned it from other school districts, other states actually. Pennsylvania has it. There's a school down in Westchester. Rockland has it. Philadelphia. Um, I believe Wappinger Falls also has one. It's for a child that basically has what they said was a square child that doesn't fit in a round pad. They found a new way to learn. The kids want to go back to school. They're graduating. Um, it's exciting to see kids that were bullied, home, their home life, um, they're in different scenarios. They actually get to go to school now. They want to go to school. 
um, they actually, the funny part was, they didn't assign teachers to the NFA West. That's what it is, it's a small building. You actually had to interview to be a teacher there, which I found very fascinating. So it just wasn't, oh, well, you're gonna go teach. These are teachers that wanna be there, kids that wanna be there, kids that find ways to get to school to be there. There was one scenario that they were telling us about that there was a student there that um, she didn't have a lot of money, she works after school and she has to take transportation to school and it costs her X amount of dollars every month. And um, she asked the teacher, can you help me kind of like budget? And the teacher said, okay. And that's what they did. They sat down, figured out her budget, how, to, how she could do better. And then at the end of the thing, uh, at the end of their conversation, she said, you really need to go back to your boss and ask him for a raise. And um, so that was basically, um, it, it's exciting because I know even here in Marlboro, we have students that have a hard time coming to school. And I would love to see if maybe we can collaborate with NFA um, to come up with something because it is a wonderful program. It's just, just the excitement that was in that room that the kids wanted to go back to school and found ways to get there. And they didn't have a great home life or they were bullied. It was a, a safe haven for them. They enjoyed being there. So for me, that was like a, a big thing and they walked and they graduated. It also brought up NFA's graduation rate and that's what they're trying to do is bring it up even higher. Um, so that was basically two main things that stuck out um, for me. And the other one was basically, again, the other one was mental health. The convention had a lot of mental health. How we're going to take it, they're talking about us finding clinics and bringing them into our school district. Um, that seems to be a thing with quite a few of the school districts now do have clinics brought in. Psychiatrists come in, um, psychologists are brought in. Uh, the parents are also brought in to help the students and the kids, it, it performs their grades have gone up um, because sometimes the kids after school can't get to their counseling or can't get there or their home life isn't that great again. So mental health is always a big issue in the last couple of years with New York State, um, which I'm proud to see. And I, I have to tell you, um, I know we, we do a lot in our own school district. So I'm very proud of Marlboro for what we do for all of this. So basically that was the main things of the convention. It was really good and business meeting this year was the shortest I can actually say it was. We started at eight and we were done by 11.30. That's, we've been out of there, they set a time now. We normally, you know, it sets until about uh, 12.30, one o'clock. So it was a good conference this year, a lot of positive. I had mentioned to Mrs. Reed that I'll reach out to Roberto Padilla, superintendent down in Newburgh, to find out more about the program and, and see what opportunities are there. So thank you. The other, the other thing that was funny is they were talking about they're actually teaching the kids how to go for an interview. They're getting suits. They're getting asking you know getting uh, asking people for for dresses and stuff. And I'm like, this is a wonderful thing to see these kids want to go back to school and know that they're safe. So. For me, I would love to see something because I know here in Marlboro, we do have different <coughs> um, children too, and I'd like to see them come back and walk across that stage. So. Jo Joanne, are you referring to something at a particular school or that's kind of a combination of different school no, programs? No, no, NFA. At NFA. N it's called NFA West. They took the old West Street uh, School and it's now a high school. Right, okay, it is the name of the program. What's the name of the program? I think it's been um, in the paper a few times. NFA West. NFA no, West, that's, West. The that's what they, that's, it's the school. It's not, it's a part of, yeah, they okay. take regents, yeah. they do everything a regular school yeah. does it. So they just do it in a different learning and, capacity. And, and they're at risk kids, I think? Some of them are, some of them, because um, everybody when they first started it, what he said was they thought it was all the kids that caused trouble. It's not, it's kids that just, like I said, it's, don't fit into a regular yeah, it everyday yeah. school or for different feel reasons. awkward or, at risk or just for different feel, reasons. Right. Not what people jump to conclusions typically that's absolutely in trouble, right. different so, reasons. Okay. I guess we have kids I here too that, that you know. Okay. So that's I would cool. Love it's right say. down the road from us. Interesting. It, no child should ever want to leave school. For me I, I you know 
I live in my fantasy that I'd love to see every child graduate and go to college or, or have some kind of, of training. So when I know of a, uh, someone that drops out, it does break my heart because what it, could we do better to prevent that from happening? And how did we help that family? Or how can we help that family get that child across that stage and become, I don't want to say a better person, but more into society and help them become, you know. So that's for me. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you. OK, moving on to the consent agenda. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approve the following consent reports as presented. Treasurer's Report, Anderson Center Contract, Budget Increases, Tax Corrections, CSC, CPSE Report, and Personnel Recommendations. Can I get a motion to approve the following consent reports? Joanne, second. Russell, any discussion? I have one. On the um, increase in budget. Is it going for a particular area? Which one? The increase in budget. There's, There's two. two. Athletic benefactors and the STEAM yes. program. The STEAM program, I know that's the $5,000 we got from New York. Correct. We actually should have done it last meeting. You accepted the donation from the athletic benefactors. Correct. Correct. This just now allocates it to a budget, yeah. which is going to obviously to the athletic budget, and they're purchasing an exterior um, sound system so that there's a better way to, like a mobile we sound system for that. exterior. Yep. We did talk about that. Yep, but we officially have to increase the budget by that amount in order to be able to expend it. Yeah, I forgot we increased it. Yep. Uh -huh. A mobile sound system as for like graduation? No, this is more <laughs> for athletic events oh. like out at, that aren't in part of the, the, the football stadium in that area. Okay. So maybe out of the softball field or another school or a soccer field or something along those lines. Any further discussion? Okay, cast your vote. Motion has been carried, five to zero. Moving on to recommended actions. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approve and authorize the Superintendent of Schools to sign the Memorandum of Agreement by and between Marlboro Central School District and the Marlboro <coughs> Faculty Association. Can I get a motion to approve and authorize the MOA? Frank. Second, Joanne. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have a, a question on the first one. Um, it says stipend is $5,444, and it says first, co first assistant coach. How many assistant coaches are there? Uh, in the current structure prior to this being approved? Yes. Four. So With this being approved, three, because the first assistant coach is actually assigned to the JV program to be the JV coach. Now we're going to be officially having a JV coach by title. The structure that's in place prior to this is that the first assistant coach is the JV coach. So we're going down by title, by down one assistant and up by one coach for the same money. It's retitling. That's really what it is. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. Motion has been carried, five to zero. I, if 
If I could, I did it again. We went through the personnel action. I didn't acknowledge someone that's here tonight that got appointed. So can I go back to just acknowledge that person? So, um, Natalie Pascal is currently an employee with us and we just increased her time with us a little bit and adjusted things a little bit. So working point four for our ENL population and point two for special education. Natalie, thank you for being with us tonight and thank you for accepting an increase in your role and working with our children each and every day. So, thank you. While you have the same thing there, um, and I know he's not here tonight, but are we go um, is Mr. Gallagher going to maybe make an appearance before he retires in January? Mr. Gallagher is not allowed to retire, so I'm not officially recognizing what you officially adopted, but we'll work on that. So, <laughs> it's a yeah, very good idea. I think we, we should mention him. I was thinking about that after we voted. That does leave a hole, right? In it sure the middle does. of the year like that? Yeah. Too early to talk about what you're going to do? Post it and hire it. Yeah. <laughs> That's we it. posted okay. it already. We're going to get resumes flowing as quickly as we can. If we can find the right person, I'll bring that person to this Board of Education uh, for appointment. If not, we will not rest until we do find that person and we'll string ourselves along until we do. I mean, it's an important hire. Not only is it the day program, but really that jazz program is such an, a, an embedded piece that's uh, centered around uh, Matt that, you know, it's some real, real magic that we have to work on there. So. That's a very, very okay. big loss and certainly right. a big hire for us. So thank you for pointing that out. I was just I'd like to say thank you very much because it's been wonderful to hear him. It's always an honor and a thrill um, and to thank him because he's been part of our school district for a while. Mm -hmm. So let's not, you know. Thank you for allowing me to go back to that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Further recommended actions, resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approve and authorize the Superintendent of Schools to sign the Memorandum of Agreement by and between Marlboro Central School District and the Marlboro Educational Administrators Association. Can I get a motion to approve and authorize the MOA? Uh, Joanne, second, Russell, any discussion? Cast your vote. Didn't come up here, relax. <laughs> Motion has been carried five to zero. Moving on. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approve and authorize the Superintendent of Schools to sign the contract by and between the Marlboro Central School District and the Marlboro Educational Administrators Association. Can I get a motion to approve and authorize the contract between the district and the MEA? Russell, second. Frank, any discussion? I should have asked this question on the last one, Mike. What, why is this open and, and being voted on? I, I forgot. You probably told us in the past, but I forgot what. Yeah, this is the one we reviewed last time we were together with um, with our attorney. It's okay. It's the culmination of negotiations between the MEAA and the school district um, by bringing together a couple of contracts and extending their contract for right. a year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Cast your vote. Motion has been carried, five to zero. Moving on to item number seven, old and new business. Is there any old business anyone would like to address? Uh, just curious, today's the 19th. How many letters of interest did we get for the open board position? Well, we received three letters of interest. Okay. Any other old business? Any new business?
Any other items? Okay. At this time, we would like to recognize district residents. Please go to the podium. You have two minutes, starting now. Okay, uh, I'd like to <clears throat> uh, come back to what I brought up at the last meeting about being able to see as you go through this, the information that you're voting on. Um, sitting here, I, I, don't, I couldn't see anything you were voting on. There's those details. Now, I realize some documents, a, some documents might, give you a detailed agenda? Uh, just this here. But it's not, doesn't have any details. Doesn't have we, any attachments again. We printed but, them. Oh, oh, was that the other one you gave me? <laughs> yes. Oh, I apologize. Oh, I didn't realize I was, my apologies. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> would, would you mind going to the podium and Stating, stating your name and where you're from. Stephen Jennison, 18 Woodcrest Lane, Milton. Um, Mr. Brooks, would you be able to elaborate on where we're at with the tax issue with Newburgh? The, um, I, I'm not exactly sure the, the level of detail. The, the news reporting that has been seen in the Southern Los Times and any of the other uh, papers that are around have, pretty spot on as far as exactly where we are. Um, there is a tremendous amount of effort right now, uh, most specifically by uh, Mr. Wither and myself, and absolutely close interest by our president and vice president to seek alternative revenue sources for that $1.2 million. So that's where we are right now. There's there's nobody lining up tomorrow ready to write the check, but I do believe that there are very good paths that are open, and we are walking down every single one of those paths with local, county, and state officials to try to find other revenue sources for that. So that will be something that we will be continuing to report on as there's any level of progress, and believe me, it will be the first thing that I scream at the top of the mountain <laughs> when there's some progress. So. I cannot argue with you. It was the town's error, right? But it's a county employee who's contracted exactly. to work for the town, correct? That's why I find it just totally unacceptable. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there, there, I have to give credit to to elected officials and um, and contract officials. There's not a lot of um, excuse excuse making. That doesn't fill the gap in our bank account right now, but there's there's not there, there's a there's full acceptance of responsibility, but that's not backed up with a check yet. So we're working on that. Okay, we do have an executive session planned for the purpose of employment of the employment history of a particular person or persons and a matter leading to the appointment or employments of a particular person. I don't believe any action will be taken. Can I get a motion to enter into executive session? Joanne, second, Frank, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> 